Hello world, today I'm going to show you how to quickly and efficiently set up a mechanical derailleur, so one that uses a cable. Now, there are some simple steps to this and it can be very easy, but I just say go in this nice sequential order and you can't go too far wrong. The first thing we need to do is understand the limitations of the cable and the limitations of these limit screws. These limit screws are only there to set the parameters of which the mech can move within so they can adjust the extremes. So how far the mech can go over towards the wheel or how far it can come out. When it comes to moving the chain between the gears, they play no role though. And that all comes down to cable tension. The first thing I'm going to do is ensure the system starts with the right tension. So what I want you to do is dial in your barrel adjuster on your shifter, which is the way we tune the gears, all the way until it bottoms out and then turn it back two full rotations. This means we have some adjustment to use either way. And then we're gonna think about that cable. So I'm gonna reset it in this instance, but obviously if you were to install a new derailleur, this would be the first thing you should do. You don't wanna be pulling down on this very hard. You just wanna have it so it's under a small amount of preload, a very, very small amount, but it's still nice and flexible. If you go yank it on with some pliers and stuff, you're already putting the system under too much load and subsequently your shifting's gonna be crap. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Next, we're gonna ignore the cable for a moment. We're gonna come back to it, but we're gonna talk about this limit screw. So on modern derailleurs, you can actually see. So here, this screw isn't doing anything when the gear's in this position. And that's because that's the low limit screw. That's gonna come into play later. Right now, I want to be using the high limit screw, which on the Shimano system is a two mil Allen fitting. I want you to turn it until you can really see it start to push the mech across the cassette. That's a way that we know that it's being engaged. If it isn't engaged, then it can still work, but it's gonna give you less security and could potentially lead to a derailment further down the line. And what I want you to do is once we've got loads of tension on, you can see it moved quite far in towards the bike. We're gonna dial it out until the center of the jockey wheel is aligned with the center of this smallest, this smallest cog. That is the high limit screw set. And next, we're gonna start tuning the gears via the cable tension. So I want you to add two clicks. One, two. Why two clicks? Because what we're gonna be looking for is that chain going straight up the cassette and not getting hung around in that middle gear. We're then just gonna pedal so that does pretty good, but actually it's almost, I would say, too much tension. The symptom of that being, instead of it going straight in, it actually wants to go up the cassette a little bit more. So I'm gonna reduce the cable tension about a rotation and add two more clicks. Then spin the cassette. That's pretty good now, but we're gonna give it another one to be absolutely sure. Not bad. So let's see the other way. now. That's a great way to see how the, the chain moves up into the bigger cogs, but we needed to go both ways. So we're gonna go down two clicks. One, two, spin. Ooh, that's pretty good now. We need to double check that it hasn't compromised the upshift, so up two. Maybe it has, so I'm gonna add a quarter of a bit of tension. There we go, that's pretty good. Now, you might have noticed that I haven't, repeat, haven't gone all the way up into this bit here. And that's because if your limit screw isn't set correctly, it could risk derailing the chain over the back and just ruin your whole entire day, if not life. So this is where this next limit screw comes into play. So what I want you to do is make sure that it isn't a million miles away from the bump stop. And an easy way to check that it's just seeing where it bottoms out. You could actually, if you want to, probably get it set pretty much by eye here. Just driving it across. That looks about right. We're gonna do some tweaking anyway. And then we're gonna grab one more gear. And we're in. Next, much in the same way, we want to do this up until tension is achieved, just preloading that bump stop ever so slightly. And then, backing out to make sure that it's not gonna interfere in any way. You can also, again, check with your hand that it's not going forward. 
Another really good way to test for this is when we're in our second gear, our second largest cog, on the upshift, we don't want to be feeling any interference or any numbness towards the end there. I would say that's pretty good. The last thing I want you to think about is B tension. B tension, very unfashionable nowadays, but it's still very, very important. B tension affects how far away that jockey wheel sits from the cassette. As you can imagine, the further away it is, the less control it's gonna have over that chain just because the distance between the two contact points is greater and the closer it is, well, it's gonna start fouling on the teeth itself, which is no good. I would say a really easy way to set B tension is to look at it in the second gear and make sure those teeth of the jockey wheel are gonna clear the largest gear as we move up. Let's have a look. Yeah, there's no noise. As a general rule of thumb, although it sounds maybe kind of slightly counterintuitive and I don't imagine they say it in the manuals, I typically try to run as little B tension as I can while still clearing all the gears and not getting any as it moves up into the final cog. Because what can happen is that jockey wheel actually fouls on that larger plate, which is just no good. A symptom of having too much B tension will be a sloppier shift also in the smaller cogs, because quite simply, it's just further away. But that's it. That's kind of how to set up a rear derailleur very, very easily, very, very quickly. And I hope that you go and able to replicate this process on your own bike. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you later.